Hey there, I'm Philip, and you may know me from a lot of OS First Timer videos in which I get my mum to try out a bunch of operating systems. Now a lot of people have been questioning, okay, you've got all these operating systems on your computer, how do you do it? And a lot of people have seen the USB in action. So what you do is you get a USB, download a Linux operating system, use a program to make it bootable on the USB, then when your computer turns on, boot the operating system off the USB and start running it. Now I'm going to tell you just how to do that step by step easily today. Here we go. Okay, to start off you're going to need two things. One, a computer with a USB port and two, a USB preferably over 4 gigabytes. This one is 32 gigabytes but yours can be whatever you like. So, stick the USB into the USB port. If your computer has a tower such as this one, the USB port should be very easy to spot. It can be seen with the USB port symbol. Simply stick in the USB and that's step one complete. Laptop computers also have USB ports so you can simply stick the USB into the laptop. Even the famous MacBook has a USB port. Unfortunately, not all devices have a USB port. This iPad, for example, completely lacks a USB port altogether, so you are not able to make a Linux Live bootable USB using an iPad. Once a USB is plugged into your computer and you're sure that you don't need to use any of the files on it, you're ready to go onto the computer and download Universal USB Installer. To download Universal USB Installer, simply open a web browser such as Mozilla Firefox, then type in Universal USB Installer into Google. Click on the first link and scroll down until you see a button saying download UUI Universal USB Installer and whatever version that is. If you are using a Mac computer to make a live USB, simply use UNET Bootin and download the Mac OS X version. This program is very similar to Universal USB Installer, however its interface is set out just slightly differently. So just download whatever version's there and click save file. It should be a very quick download and once it has finished downloading, simply double click the downloaded file and the file will be instantly ready to launch. And click I agree. At this point you want to choose the Linux distribution you'd like to install. There's many here such as Ubuntu, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, um, Linux Mint 14, Debian, Fedora, Backtrack, there's countless on this list. But for now I'm going to use Bodhi Linux. Every operating system can come as an ISO file and you can either use this program to download the iOS file by itself or you can download it manually. So for this example I'm going to click download the ISO and it says launch the download link, just click yes. The download process on each page should be very similar depending on what system you're using. For this example, you just had to wait 5 seconds and click OK and then it's downloading. You can also download any operating system by coming over here, typing in random names such as Ubuntu, go to the home page and click download or find where the operating system is stored. Here's Ubuntu desktop. You would choose 32-bit or 64-bit, and once you've chosen one, you would click Get Ubuntu. If 64-bit doesn't work, try 32-bit. Once the file has completed downloading, simply click Browse, and choose the folder where it downloaded to. Select the drive of your USB in this drop-down menu. In my case, it's drive O to be very careful here because you could accidentally wipe out something you don't want to wipe out for example your real hard drive that you store Windows on so what you're going to want to do is press Windows E to bring up this menu or if you don't want to do that you can go to the start menu and just click computer now from this menu look at where the USB is my USB is called pendrive drive O there are many other drives here and we definitely wouldn't be wanting to format the D drive or the C drive. So let's move on with the process. What you need to do is click Format. This erases all the files that are currently on your USB drive. This step is optional. You can set a persistent file size for storing changes. The problem with a live USB is, for example, you might download a bunch of software on it 
and then all that software will be gone when you restart the computer with a USB. If you want to use a live USB as kind of an operating system you can take around, set this as high as you possibly can. I've currently set it at 4 gigabytes. And then all the programs you download and all the settings you apply to the operating system will stay and you can take it to computer to computer with all your settings kept. Next, you click Create. And it's giving you a warning, making sure that you know what's going on. Drive O is the USB device. It's going to be formatted, and it's going to be the one that the operating system you've chosen to download is installed on. Click Yes. And this process here can take quite a long time, so don't touch your computer and just wait for it to finish. At some point in the installation, it will start extracting the ISO onto the USB. Once it finishes extracting, it still has a few more steps to go, and this process can take a very long time. Once you reach this step, it may appear that the program has frozen, but don't fear. This is completely normal, and you simply need to wait around 5 to 30 minutes for this process to complete. You will know the setup is complete once you see the words, Installation done, process is complete, at the bottom of the window. At this point the process is complete and you can turn off the computer and get ready to launch a USB. Simply close the program, turn it off and get ready. When the computer is completely turned off and you've made sure that the USB is stuck into the computer, turn the computer on and get ready to configure the BIOS or do an alternative startup method. You want to make sure the computer boots from the live USB rather than your computer hard drive. To do this you may need to press a button on system startup. In my case the button is enter, however in other cases it may be F8 or F12. To interrupt normal setup press enter. To choose a temporary startup device I'm going to press F12 and now it's given me an option of what I want to start up my computer with. And I can simply press up and down arrow keys on my computer to choose. Now. Some, these are different hard drives and ports on the computer. Basically, I want to use my Jet Flash Transcend 32GB USB. You should see the word USB or 32GB or 4GB, depending on your size. Simply choose that option. Once you've chosen that option, a Boot Options menu should appear. Simply choose Body Live or whatever the Live option is to get the system running. A bunch of text may display on the screen, a bunch of stuff may happen, but once that's all gone, the operating should start up. Depending on what Linux-based system you chose, there may be a bit of setup required before you can access a desktop. In this case, I just have to choose a few options, such as the desktop profile, which I'm going to choose fancy. And then I need to choose a theme, so I'll just choose... Hmm, this theme should do. Click OK, Next and then the system has booted up with this theme that I've chosen and you can now use your Linux based operating system perfectly at this point simply play around with the operating system try it out see if you like it if you don't like it don't use it get another distribution there's heaps out there that look way different once you try it on your desktop computer you can pretty much try it on any computer that has a USB port be aware that if you didn't set up a persistent storage when we made the live USB, all the settings and programs you install will be wiped as soon as you turn off the computer and put in another computer or even the same computer. When you're sure this is the Linux operating system for you, you're ready to install it on another USB, a portable hard drive, or even your desktop hard drive. You can multi-boot it, meaning when you turn your computer on, it can choose Windows 7 or whatever other operating system you use, or the booty Linux or whatever Linux operating system you choose or you can set it as your main operating system using up the entire hard drive the choice is entirely yours when you're ready to install the operating system on your computer or another hard drive simply click the install icon which is usually on the desktop from here simply follow the instructions given choose the settings you want and the location you wish to install the operating system and then the operating system will fi officially be installed ready for you to use every day. I hope this video has helped those wanting to test out Linux based operating systems on their computer. To see some more Linux distros in action or even other operating systems through history check out my OS First Timer YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best in your discovery of Linux. See you next time. Bye.